All right, what's on the bench today? Um, I was going to do a video on a chip of the day, and uh, this is the board that that chip is on, and I just can't get it to work right. Uh, the sample program that came with the with the Arduino driver didn't work, and then I got a different sample program off the internet, and that's what's in here now, and obviously it's not working either. It's just displaying gobbledygook. But anyway, uh, that's not the point of today's video. Today's video is in the process of troubleshooting this thing, I wanted to make sure that my signals were clean, right? So I put an oscilloscope on its uh, clock data and latch, right? So you clock it in and latch it in, clock, latch. And I wanted to make sure all those things were good. So I got out my oscilloscope and I checked the, the signals and everything looked fine. And I put on my, I put on my uh, uh, fancy, so once I, I knew that the voltages were correct, I want to make sure the timing was correct. So I put on put on the uh, uh, digital part of the oscilloscope, you know, multi-mode oscilloscope. Um, and so I decided to take a look at all of that. And in the process of looking at that, everything looked fine. Um, I noticed that, um, I don't know if I noticed, but I guess the next step that I went for was to see if maybe the power supply uh, was was stable, right? You always make sure your power supply is stable. Now, I have LEDs, so they're going to draw some current, right? So as you turn on and off the LEDs, you'll draw less current, more current, whatever, right? And so I figured, okay, well, I'll do a, a measurement of the voltage rail, right? It's a 5 volt, five volt voltage rail. And I'll do a analysis of the uh, voltage changes, right? So the way to do that correctly is to use what's known as a power rail probe, okay? And I did a video on this one before. Uh, a gracious viewer uh, sent in uh, his project, uh, Power Rail Probe. It's and uh, I'll try to remember to put a link down below. It's a really, really nice box. It's battery powered, so it's very clean. And what it does is it's able to add a big DC offset. So if you have a five volt rail, you offset five volts, and then you can zoom in on the uh, uh, noise. And you can say, well, why don't you just push the AC button on your probe? Doesn't that do the same thing? No, it doesn't. It's not the same thing because you'll always have a AC a coupling. You'll always have a, a capacitive droop on it. Whereas this, the, everything will always be DC accurate and you'll just put in the DC offset and it'll be DC accurate. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. So I did that and I got something that looks like this. Let me change the camera and I think you can see there it's um, uh, been referenced so that it's shifted to, to zero volts DC offset and now I can crank up the gain of the oscilloscope so it's 200 millivolts per division so we have about 400 millivolts of noise well that's quite a bit of noise right um, and so uh, we can do, we can do things like maybe add a capacitor to try to smooth it out or whatever, or change our regulation, maybe change the, the chip that's regulating or whatever. Right now I'm just using a, a, a Rigol power supply, but, um, uh, maybe you have drops in, you know, have long wires going to the proto board. So the get voltage drops on the wires or inductance or whatever, right? So anyway, interesting to take a look at, right? Okay. In the process of doing that, let me move you over so the camera's a little more square to the picture here. That looks a little nicer. All right. So in doing that, I, I noticed that I could, I could do the same thing just with the oscilloscope. And I think I'm not sure if my other oscilloscope could, could do this or not. So one of the cool things about this new oscilloscope is that um, trace one is, uh, let's see here, trace one here, yellow, is just an oscilloscope probe. And I've added a five volt offset. Uh -oh. oh, sorry, good. <laughs> Tripod decided to let loose, whoa. Okay, uh, so I've just added an offset uh, with the, the knob, right? So usually you can only go what is shown on your oscilloscope. You don't have a lot of 
DC offset that you can apply. But this particular scope, you can see I'm applying a 5.02 volt offset. And that brings me to the center of the screen. Um, so, uh, can't I, can't I change that with a, uh, oh, I can't. Well, that's, that's a bug I need to tell Keyslight about. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Okay, so let's see if we can go up in voltage. Let's go to, let's go to uh, 10 volts. Let's see if we can actually add, oops, let's see here, uh, cancel. 10 volts. Yeah, I can put in a 10 volt offset. How far can I go? 20 volts. 15. So it's, I guess it's plus or minus 15 volt offset. That's crazy. I don't think I've had a scope that could do that before. Comment below if your scope can do a plus or minus 15 volt offset. Maybe I just haven't looked before. But anyway, it's super nice in this case. Let me put back in the uh, five volt offset. And uh, yeah, so there we go. Um, really nice. Let's do a single shot here. Um, so once again, we have about a 400, let's see here, four, plus or minus 400. Oh, it's plus or minus 400. I, maybe I read it wrong last time. It's plus or minus 400 millivolts, right? That's almost half a volt. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Okay, so let's turn this back on again. I'll just leave both on the screen here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add a capacitor. Where, 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 where? I can't point to the point thing. I'll just leave the camera at that setting. I'm going to put in a hundred. Let's see here. Let's try with this. Do let's do this one first. Okay. Uh, that's a, we can start with this one. This is a hundred microfarad tantalum, which should be really good, right? Hundred microvolt tantalum. All right. So, uh, yeah, look at that. So no capacitor and which is plus. I'll make sure I plug it in the right way. Tantalums are, I don't like to go in backwards and there's with the tantalum. So, right. Much better. Now we can. We can even up the gain a little bit here and yeah, try to bring it back into picture. Um, yeah, pretty nice. Now, um, I kind of like this better still because of uh, it's always zero at the center. And so it's easier for me to not have to do the mental calculation of always subtracting five from that one. All right. And so here we've got maybe plus or minus 50 micro, affiliate 50. So we went to plus or minus 400 to plus or minus 50. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, let's go ahead and put a different capacitor in. And this one is a aluminum electrolytic, uh, 220 microfarads. So is it better? And I would say, no, it's worse. So even though it's more than twice as big, um, it's not doing as good of a job. And I believe that's because of the ESR, okay? So the ESR of the tantalum is just way better and a little bit better at filtering in this job. Let's go ahead and put in the uh, tantalum as well and see what happens. Uh, what did that do? Huh. Let me try that one again. Huh. Okay. Let me take out the aluminum. Yeah, the aluminum just kind of rolls it off. I don't know. Anyway, uh, point of the video is uh, a way to diagnose uh, your circuit um, take a look at your, your, uh, bounciness, your, your cleanness of your VCC rail. Does it cause the problem in my circuit? No, that's not what's causing the problem. I think it's a software issue, <laughs> but, um, it gives you an idea that it could possibly have, uh, you know, it was almost plus or minus half a volt, right? Uh, the noise that this, that this thing was causing. 
um, because my little proto board didn't have a big bypass cap on it. So I'm going to remember that in the future. Uh, rarely do I put a big bypass cap on the on the um, proto boards. I have a point one. In fact, I have several point ones, but obviously it, it's uh, it's not good enough. So I should probably add a tantalum to each of my proto boards just to keep it clean. All right, just a quick little video for the day.